I think you have seen the provisional sums in all the BOQs and you have seen that they keep the provisional sum in one line item and they add another item which is contractor attendance, overheads and the profit and so on. Hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmed Adel and this is Cost Engineering Professional. And in this video, we'll be talking about the general principles of POMI part two. So let's start. All right, guys, welcome back. Previously, we have talked about the general principles of POMI, and we understood that these general principles consists of 10 subsections. And in our previous video, we have discussed up to section five, which is description of items. I leave the link to that video down in the description and in the top right corner as well. So in this video, we'll be starting from here, subsection six, which is work to be executed by a specialist nominated by the employer. So unless otherwise required by the conditions of contract, work which is required to be executed by a specialist nominated by the employer shall be given as a sum. Such sum shall be exclusive of contractor's profit and in each case an item shall be given for the addition of profit. Number two here, an item shall be given in each case for assistance by the contractor which shall include these things. So what they are trying to say here in case some work is there to be executed by someone nominated by the employer or by the owner of the project, then in that case, we have to keep one item for these works. And another item that we will keep there, I think you have seen the provisional sums in all the BOQs and you have seen that they keep the provisional sum in one line item and they add another item which is contractor attendance, overheads and the profit and so on. So that's why they are trying to say here that we will keep an item for the work to be executed by a specialist and we will keep another item for the assistance which is required by the contractor. And what assistant is required by the contractor? Let's see here. We have the use of contractors, administrative arrangements, use of constructional plant, use of contractors facilities, use of temporary works, space for specialists office and stores, clearing away rubbish, scaffolding required by the specialist, giving particulars, unloading, distributing, hoisting, and placing in position items of plant, machinery, or the like, given particulars. So when you say, for example, that the elevator is a provisional sum item and it will be executed by a specialist nominated by the employer, then this item will cost, for example, 100,000. So this is the price of this item. This is the money that will be paid to the specialist. But in order for the specialist to do his work, he needs some assistance from the main contractor, such as what? Such as the scaffolding. And as they say here, unloading, distributing, and hoisting, placing in position his materials, clearing away rubbish after his uh, works, a space for his offices and his stores, because he is outsider. To the project he doesn't have anything here so we have to facilitate his work as a main contractor and that's why we keep this second item so in case of work to be executed by a specialist you have to keep one item for the work and one item for the contractor attendance overhead and the profit and this is usually a percentage and it should include these things okay subsection number seven here goods materials or services to be provided by a merchant or a tradesman again nominated by the employer so unless otherwise required by the conditions of contract goods materials or services which are required to be provided by a merchant or tradesman nominated by the employer shall be given as a sum again it's another sum such sum shall be exclusive of contractors profit and in each case, an item shall be given for the addition of profit. Fixing goods and materials shall be given in accordance with the relevant clauses in these particular principles of measurement. Fixing shall be understood to include unloading, storing, distributing, and hoisting the goods and materials. Particulars shall be given of any requirements for the contractor to arrange for delivery or pay any costs of conveying goods or materials. So it is similar to the item before here, works to be executed by 
a specialist, but here they are talking about the supply only of items. So if there is some items to be supplied by the employer, let's say, for example, the ceramic tiles. So there will be something that is called prime cost or PC rate. And we all know what is the PC rate. So the PC rate per square meter for tiles, for example, this is only for the supply of tiles. But in installation of the tiles and all the other associated administrative works should be given by the contractor himself. And actually here that there should be another item given for the installation and all this stuff. But for the prime cost items, usually they are adding the installation to the prime cost item, but they put the PC rate in the description. So item number eight here or subsection number eight here work to be executed by a government or public authority. Again, it is similar unless otherwise required by the conditions of contract work which may only be carried out by a government or public authority shall be given as a sum because it will be similar to the normal or the usual provisional sum that we see in any BOQ. So if there is an item that needs to be executed by a government authority or a public authority, then in that case, again, we will put this item as a sum and this sum shall be exclusive again of contractor's profit and in each case, an item shall be given for the addition of profit and margins. So an item shall be given in each case for assistance by the contractor as described in the section number six here, uh, item number two, which said that this item will include everything, administrative arrangements and plant and facilities, temporary works and all this stuff. So if it's a work to be executed by a specialist nominated by the employer, or if the employer is supplying some goods or materials or services, or if there is part of the works in the project that needs to be executed by a government or public authority, then we will have an item for this work or this material, then another item for the contractor himself for the overheads and the profits and the attendance and the administrative charges and the enabling the work of this subcontractor or supplier or government or public authority so this is the concept okay subsection number nine here talks about day works what are the day works the day works is a schedule of rate only items and labors and construction plant that you can keep at the end of your boq just to finalize some variations or some works that are not part of your original project scope so we keep the rates for these items only to use them for this purpose. So here, this section talks about how can we make the bill of the day works and these rates that we can have in this bill can be for which items or which manpower or what exactly and what these rates should include. So the cost of labor in day works, first of all, we can have labors in day works like uh, unskilled uh, labor, helper, mason, carpenter, plumper, and all this stuff. So the cost of labor in day work shall be given as a sum. Alternatively, a schedule of different categories of labor may be given containing a provisional quantity of hours for each category. Then the cost of labor included in a sum or a schedule shall include wages, which is the salaries, bonuses also, and allowances paid to operatives directly engaged on day works. So these are the things that should be included in the rate. And these things are wages, bonuses, and allowances paid to operatives directly engaged on day works. So no overhead profit or something like that, including those operating mechanical plant and transport in accordance with the appropriate employment agreement or where no such agreement exists, the actual payments made to the work people concerned. So what they are trying to say, they are trying to tell you that the rate in the day works should come from the contract which you have for the labor, plus these uh, mechanical plant and the transport and the bonuses and the allowances. So no overheads are included here. And if you don't have a contract with your labor, if you are hiring the labor on daily basis, as we discussed in our previous videos, then in that case, the actual payments made to these people who did, who will do the work, let's say, this is the rate that you should keep in the day works. 
It doesn't matter which rate you keep in the day works, but it will be understood like that, like the money or the rate that you are putting is exclusive of overheads and profit. And why do we keep the day works? As we say, just to facilitate some variations or if the client asks you to do some extra work that is not part of your current contract, you don't need to go and agree the prices again from the beginning because you will have the day works which will include labors and some materials and some construction plant and the rates for all these things can be there. So you can establish with the client the cost of any new item that can come easily. This is the purpose of day works. But it can also include some materials, but the cost of materials in day works shall be given as a sum. Alternatively, a schedule may be given containing a provisional quantity of different materials. The cost of materials included in a sum or a schedule shall be the net invoiced price. So if you are keeping some materials in the day works bill, then the rate that you will put will be the exact supply rate of these material, the invoice price, including delivery to the site. So if you are keeping, let's say, a rate for the supply of sand, let's say, so how much one cubic meter of sand will be invoiced to you plus the delivery to the site. This is the rate that you should keep for the supply of the sand if the supply of the sand is one of your day works materials. The cost of constructional plant employed exclusively in day works shall be given as a sum. Alternatively, a schedule of different categories of plant may be given containing a provisional quantity of hours or such other period of time as may be appropriate for each category. So if we are talking, let's say about a scaffolding, for example, you can put in the day works that the higher rate of a scaffolding of this much of a square meters of a scaffolding per month is this much. So it will be like that. The cost of constructional plant included in a sum or schedule shall include fuel, consumable uh, stores, repairs, maintenance, and the insurance of plant. Let's say if you are talking about some equipment or something like that. So the rate that you will put will include these things, fuel, oil change, tire change, repairs, maintenance, insurance, and so on. An item shall be given for the addition of establishment charges. So you will have the rates for these items, either it's labors or plant or materials or whatever. But in addition to that, or by the end of this bill, you will keep another item that says that the contractor overhead and the profits for any of the previous items is, let's say, 10%. So you will give the rate itself and you will give the percentage in a separate item. An item shall be given for the addition of establishment charges, overheads, and the profit to each of the sums or schedules of labors, materials, or plant. So you will keep the rates for the labors, materials, and the plant in your day works bill. And as we say, these rates will include what? It is what we have discussed here in this section or in this subsection, which is the day works. So they have told you that for the labors, it should include wages, bonuses, allowances, and uh, anything paid uh, directly to the uh, operatives engaged on the day works. But it will not include any overhead on the profit. Why? Because an item shall be given for the establishment charges, overheads, and the profit at the end. So we can take the rate of the item plus this percentage, which is for the main contractor for doing this work. Okay. Establishment charges, overheads, and the profit shall include, so that percentage or that item that you will give at the end in order to add it to whatever items that will be used, this percentage should include costs related to the employment of labor. Like, let's say, we have another video here talks about what are the costs that uh, a company will encounter due to acquiring or hiring labors like uh, let's say uh, visas immigration and health insurances and all these things so cost related to employment of labor this should be included in the percentage that you will have this item this item the establishment charges overheads and the profit so this shall include any cost related to the employment of the labor itself like some fees you are paying to the government authorities to make a labor contract and this stuff. Costs related to storage of materials, including handling, 
and waste in storage. Contractors administrative arrangements like the project manager, the construction manager and all these employees and there are so many other administrative arrangements. Then constructional plant except plant employed exclusively on day works. So if you have some plant that should come under this percentage, it should be a plant different from the plant that you are selecting from the day works to add this percentage to. I hope it is uh, clear. Then contractors, uh, facilities, temporary works and sundry items. So that percentage or that margin that the contractor will put in addition to the day works should include these things. Okay, here subsection number 10 and the last in the general principles, which is contingencies. Unless otherwise required by the conditions of contract, okay, contingencies shall be given as a sum. No item shall be given for the addition of profit. So in some projects, some items are, let's say, are not 100% identified or we need to keep some money for doing some works that we don't know what these works are. So these are contingencies. So in case of contingencies, we will keep one item and against this item in the BOQ, we will put an amount that this amount is a contingency for the project. But this item, we will not add any profit or overheads or anything to this item as we did for the items that requires a specialist nominated by the employer or materials to be purchased from a tradesman nominated by the employer and all this stuff. So in case of contingencies, we will not keep an item for the addition of profit. It will be the item of the contingency and that's it. And if this item is not required or not used during the execution of the contract or during doing the project itself, then this item will not be certified and will not be paid. So in case this item is there or you need it in the BOQ, you will not add an item for the addition of profit. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I appreciate your valuable time. Two quick things before you go. This presentation is made via Canva. I leave the link down in the description below. It's a very great platform. I trust them so much and I create all my, or let's say the most of my uh, presentations with Canva. They have too much photos, texts, templates, elements, and so many other great stuff. And the second thing is our online courses, the quantity surveying, the cost estimation, the procurement. I'll also leave the links to them down in the description down below. Ton of information is there, very engaging courses, and it can help you enhance your career and get better skills and become faster and all this stuff. So that's it for this video. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Costa Engineering Professional out. Bye bye.